Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together. Uh, we've been busy on um, circuits, uh, electric circuits uh, for grade 10. So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family. And of course, uh, you can become a member on our channel, uh, you know, by benefiting on those valuable perks that we have. All right, so what I want us to do today We've looked at uh, resistors in series, we've looked at resistors in parallel, and now we are going to be looking at, um, you know, mixed resistors, right? So where we've got a combination of parallel and series, but as per usual, we're going to uh, start by, you know, just analyzing the circuit, all right? So I took this question from the 2017 uh, grade 10 exam, so um, I think anyone can really benefit from this question. All right, let's dive right into it. Okay, right. So they say to us, uh, consider uh, the circuit that is below, right? So first of all, ladies and gents, we see that we are given a switch there. So, um, okay, first of all, before I even talk about a switch. So on our battery, we know we're going to have the positive side and the negative side, right? So we know as per usual, right, we're going to have current that is flowing once switch s is open but note when switch s is open right no current flows to the external circuit and as a result all the other readings become zero except you know for v1 okay because uh, remember v1 just measures uh, the voltage across the battery right so it doesn't necessarily need to be connected to the external circuit for us to get that voltage that potential difference Right, now, if you note this, they are indicating also to us that the EMF of this battery is 24 volts, right? So we note that, and in this case, now what happens? Suppose we now close switch S. What's going to happen? We know that we're going to have the total amount of current flowing through our circuit. We know that total current would pass through A1, right? And, of course, once we get to that point there, right, we know that um, there's no current that flows through the voltmeter. So all of the current would go across that bulb. So this is, a, uh, this is an 8 ohm bulb, okay? Right. But until we get to this node, right? And so what happens in that case? We know that we're going to have current that is going to divide so I'm going to just use a different color there. So let's say, well, that's current, uh, uh, you know, I1 uh, going there. Let's, okay, well, it's going to be the current across A2. So we'll call it A2. Okay. So that's going to be the current that passes there, right? But we also have another current in this case, which is uh, going across the other bulb. Okay. So there we've got current that's passing across A3, right? Until we get to that node again, right? So now the moment that we get to this node, we know that the current through A2 and current through A3 uh, would meet at that point. And so the total current, of course, assuming that our uh, switch is closed, so the total current is now going to uh, flow across that circuit, right? Back into our battery, right? So... In this case, I want you to note. So now, what can we say about, well, let's call it bulb one, uh, if you don't mind. And let's call this one bulb two. And let's call this one bulb three, right? So what can we say about, about bulb two and bulb three? Well, in this case, they are current dividers. So what does that mean? It means that they are connected in parallel, right? But what I also want you to appreciate is the fact that we can actually take the combination of those two uh, bulbs, two and three, right? And so that we can get the uh, effective parallel resistance there. And in that case, it would make uh, that resistor to be in series, right? Now, let's just try and answer the questions for now. Um, and we'll come back to what the circuit actually looks like. Now, they say with switch S open. Now, remember we said with switch S open, we know that there is no current flowing in the external circuit, right? So they say, um, write down the reading on the following. 
right? V1, remember, we are measuring across that battery. So the reading on V1 in that case uh, should actually be equal to uh, 24 volts. Okay, remember we said once we're reading across the battery, doesn't matter whether, uh, you know, current is flowing through the external circuit. Uh, if we're measuring the voltage across the potential difference across the battery, in this case, we will get a reading. So that's the reading of our EMF value, which is 24 volts, right? And of course, the, uh, the emitter reading, there's no current that is flowing. So in that case, that should be just zero volts uh, there. Right, now they say to us switch S is now closed. So remember, we spoke about this, uh, the switch being closed and we know that there'll now be current that is flowing, right? So let's call the current uh, through there. Let's call it I1, uh, that is our total current, okay? And of course, what it does is it divides into uh, I2 and I3, uh, in this case, respectively. So let's call that I2, let's call that I3. But we know that I2, uh, that should be a three, right? We know that I2 and I3, uh, put together should give us I1, which is the total current, right? Okay, now they say to us calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So let's do that, right? So um, we know that we're going to have 11.1.2, right? So we had the first bulb there, the 8 ohm bulb, okay, uh, which we called bulb 1. And we know we had a combination of these other two bulbs that were connected in parallel, uh, which we called bulb two and three, right? So now we can actually, um, okay, let me just write three there and let's write two there and let's write one there. Right, so what we're going to do is let's find the effective parallel resistance of bulb two and bulb three, right? So in this case, all we're going to do is say, well, one over R parallel, right? That will be equal to one, uh, sorry, one over R2 plus one over R3. And in this case, that should be one over eight plus one over eight, okay? And what will that give us? That will give us two over eight, isn't it? But that's one over R parallel, right? But if we wanted R parallel, so we are inverting this R parallel over 1, we need to invert that as well. So that becomes 8 over 2, which is going to be 4 ohms, right? Please don't forget that part. Alternatively, ladies and gents, we know that uh, when we've got two resistors, we can just simply take the product over the sum of the resistors, right? And please remember this works only for two resistors. Right, it becomes a little bit more complex once you add more resistors. So that will be 8 multiplied by 8 divided by 8 plus 8. Okay, and again, you are still going to get that 4 ohms. Now, what do we have? It means that we've taken, there's our bulb R1, right? Now, the parallel resistors have become one bulb. Let's call that R parallel. And in this case, um, we know that that bulb is 4 ohms. It has a value of 4 ohms. This one, 8 ohms. The other one, 4 ohms. So now, the two bulbs, the one in parallel as well as R1, have got the same current that is passing across them. So as a result, it means that they will be in series. So we will say, well, R total, or you can say R external, that will equal to R1, plus that R parallel, in this case, which is 8 plus 4, and that gives us 12 ohms, right? I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents, right? So we had a parallel combination. We broke that down, or rather we uh, merged those into one resistor, and in this case, we added uh, with the other resistor in series, right? So now the next question they say, calculate the reading on voltmeter V2, right? Now, I want you to note in this case, which current would pass through that voltmeter V, uh, I mean, uh, that uh, one ohm bulb there, right? And in this case, what is V2 measuring? It's measuring the voltage 
only a cross, in this case, uh, the, the uh, bulb one, right? Well, I almost said the eight ohm bulb, but they are, almost, they are all uh, eight ohms. So in this case, we are measuring the voltage only across uh, bulb one, right? So we need to find out how much current is passing through bulb one. And so we know that it's current I1 that's passing there, right? We can find that current, okay? Right, so 11.1.2. So in this case, um, uh, it is, oh, well, it's actually 0.3, right? So we're going to say, right, to find current I1, which is the total current, right? I am going to take the voltage that is given. Now, which voltage was given? I was given the EMF of the cell, right? But remember, we said voltage must always be with its corresponding resistance. So in this case, the battery is supplying all our resistors. So as a result, it means that we are going to take, in this case, all our resistors combined, right? So we're going to say, well, uh, that is going to be uh, V external, or you can say the EMF right divided by r external or we can actually we called it r total there right so that's 24 divided by 12 and that will give us 2 amperes so now we know that uh, the current through that bulb current uh, i1 uh, is 2 amperes right so that current is 2 amperes is 2 amperes rather right 2 amperes of current are passing there so now we can get the value of V2, right? Uh, by simply saying, well, V2 is equal to I1 multiplied by R. So V is equals to I times R. Please don't forget your triangle, right? I, R. Okay, so we know I1 is 2 amperes. And the resistance in this case, which was bulb 1, uh, that's 8 ohms. And so that will give us 16 volts. Okay, right. So um, if the voltage there is 16 volts, that only tells you that if this guy took 16 volts and we've got a total of 24, what weighs the other voltage? Of, of course, it should be across that 4 ohm resistor. And in this case, uh, it should be actually uh, 24 Remember, our total is 24, which was shared across the 8 ohm, as well as the parallel combination, right? So 24 minus 16 should give us 8 volts. Of course, we are not asked that, but in this case, it's, it's something that we just need to uh, constantly remind ourselves. All right, now let's go to the next one. They say, how do the readings on the emitter, on emitter rather, um, a2 and A3 compare with each other, right? So they're not asking us to actually calculate those readings. What they want us to find out is how do they compare, right? So of course we know that current divides in resistors in parallel, but we said how does it divide? It divides inversely, right? More current goes where there's less resistance, but note, Bulb two and bulb three has got have got rather exactly the same uh, uh, resistance. So what does that mean? It would mean that the same current or rather a uh, current would actually divide equally, right? We had a current of two amperes. Goes without saying, it means we'll have one ampere passing here and another one ampere passing there. So to answer that question, we know that the current. Uh, they said, how do they compare? In this case it means that those currents are equal, okay? All right, so A2 would be equal to A3, all right? All right, so we leave it there. So remember that combination of resistors. I want us to take uh, uh, another question, but we'll take it in another video, right? So that you get, you know, into the hang of working with resistors, mixed resistors, okay? and you know how to navigate your way around that. All right, for now, ladies and gents, I'll see you guys next time uh, when we look at the next video. Prepare for those exams and keep working hard. From me, your favorite uncle, I'll see you next time. Shop, shop.